Human beings are the glory and the garbage of the universe. That was something the French scientist Blaise Pascal said. The glory is easy to see. We tell jokes, write poems, score goals, make music, make babies, build skyscrapers, cure diseases. But the garbage is easy to see too. We break promises, tell lies, we murder, exploit, cheat and abuse. With the same hands we create wonder and cause unimaginable pain. It's like there's a cocktail of glory and garbage shaken up together inside each one of us. So here's the question. Why are we like this? The first book of the Bible, Genesis, helps us understand both the glory and the garbage. First the glory. We're glorious because we've been made by a glorious God. The word good is used seven times in Genesis chapter 1. It's used to describe everything that the maker makes, including you and me. This God and the world he creates is overwhelmingly good. At the end of the chapter it says, God saw all that he'd made and it was very good. A God who lacked generosity or kindness or creativity or beauty could never create something like the perfect universe we see here in Genesis chapter 1. God creates and sustains life. He puts the first human beings in charge of the rest of creation. He tells them to increase and be fruitful. God gifts them the world. It's an amazing thing. He gifts them the world. But the word good is also used in the Bible when someone finds someone or something lovely. So when God looks at all creation and especially at human beings he's made, he says it was very good. He's saying that he finds them lovely, captivating, beautiful. It's not a stretch to say that the relationship between God and humanity begins with love at first sight. God loves his creation and here at the beginning he looks at it and those he's made and he says, you're glorious. I delight in you. One God, but with three distinct persons. As you read the Bible, these three persons are described as Father and Son and Spirit. And they relate to each other in perfect, joyful love. This is what it means when the Bible says God is love. It's not just something God does, it's something God is. Before anything existed, he loved. And the really stunning thing is that he could have kept this perfect love and happiness to himself. Unlike you and me, unlike other gods, he didn't need anything or anyone else so that he could love and be loved. He had that in himself. He didn't need to create anything, but he did. Because he wants to share the perfect love and happiness he has in himself. He wants to draw others into it. He wants us to have it too. It's an amazing thing. And that's why he makes us in his image. You see, that phrase in Genesis 1, being made in his image, means that we're capable of knowing him, loving him, and enjoying him. Just think of the best gift you've ever been given. Now, however good that gift was, hopefully you know that it wasn't as amazing as the human being who gave it to you. In the same way, we may think that the greatest gift we have in our life is family, or sex, or sport, or beauty, or friendship, or health, or achievement. But wonderful though these gifts are, they can never be as wonderful as the giver of those gifts, or the maker of those gifts. That's why the very greatest pleasure in life isn't enjoying the gifts God has given, wonderful though they are. The greatest pleasure the universe has to offer is enjoying the giver of those gifts, God himself. What I mean by enjoying God is enjoying his presence, his personality, his perfections, savouring him, treasuring him, revelling in him, just enjoying who he is, the way that you might enjoy getting to know the very best friend you have. Except, of course, the pleasure of enjoying God himself is infinitely greater than that, infinitely greater. Now, maybe this sounds as alien to you as it did to me. I certainly didn't know this as a younger man. The God I thought people were talking about made me so bored that occasionally when I went to church, I used to pass the time by counting the bricks up the wall. 
But that's the reality being held out to us in the Bible. Your purpose in life as a human being, made in God's image, is to share in his perfect happiness. There's no happiness on earth that comes close. The greatest gift God can give you is himself. Being made in God's image also means that we were made literally to image him, to reflect him. Not far from where I live, there's a building called the Banqueting House. It was built in the 17th century. And when you go inside, there's this stunning painting on the ceiling. And the kind people at the Banqueting House realise that the problem with staring up at this beautiful painting on the ceiling is that it quite literally gives you a pain in the neck. You stare at this painting and after a while it really starts to hurt. So what they've done to help you admire the painting properly is to put mirrors on the top of trolleys. And you push these trolleys around, you look into the mirror on top of the trolley, and the mirrors enable you to enjoy this glorious painting to your heart's content. In the same way, like mirrors, you and I were made to reflect God's goodness, his beauty, so the whole world can see it and share in that happiness too. And the best thing is, because he's a joyful God, we reflect him best when we enjoy him most. So God wants us to enjoy him. Now this was such a revelation to me as I got to grips with the Bible. I'd always assumed God wanted me to sing hymns I couldn't follow in buildings I didn't like, wearing clothes I couldn't stand. But God wants us to be happy in him so that we'll reflect out to the world that he is our greatest joy in life, whatever our circumstances. And by the way, as Genesis 1 makes clear, we're the only part of the universe that God has created in his image. That means we're uniquely privileged, another sign of God's incredible goodness towards us. So we're the glory of the universe, but we're also the garbage. Imagine you finished your day trip to the banqueting house. You walk out with your friends and someone says, that was fantastic, and someone else says, yeah, it was fantastic. Those mirrors, they were amazing, they were brilliant. Those mirrors on the wheels, the mirrors were absolutely fantastic. And you say, well, yeah, the mirrors were good, but they were only good because they reflected the ceiling. The whole point of the mirrors, the reason they're there is not to draw attention to themselves or anything else, but to reflect the beauty above. Our purpose is the same, to enjoy God, reflecting him as we do that. But if we're honest, we're not like that. One early author, Augustine, wrote that we're curved in on ourselves. We're like mirrors that are supposed to be pointed upwards and outwards, but instead we're bent downwards and inwards. Rather than enjoying and reflecting our creator, we enjoy and reflect created things more. To put it another way, you and I have other gods. You say, I don't even believe in God. But the Bible says actually all of us worship something or someone. Whatever your heart clings to and relies upon, that's your God. You see, as mirrors, we can't reflect nothing. We'll always reflect something, whatever that may be. And we'll reflect whatever we love and trust and enjoy most. Whatever our hearts cling to and rely upon for their security. The reason why the world we live in is now not the world of Genesis 1. The reason there's garbage as well as glory is because our hearts cling to and rely upon created things rather than our creator. And when we live like that, it ruins everything. It's just not what you and I were made for. It's like taking a priceless violin and using it to hammer in tent pegs, which is a tragic use of a violin and a very poor way to put up a tent. You and I weren't meant to revel in our own glory. We were meant to enjoy an infinitely greater one. We were meant to enjoy and appreciate and savour and participate in and reflect the infinite goodness and happiness of God himself we're far too easily pleased. Why put up with our tiny drops of happiness when we're made to experience whole oceans of it? Blaise Pascal said, everyone seeks happiness without exception. 
but are you searching in the right place?